My instincts are to tell you the most interesting animal facts that I know. What's an instinct? We talk about them all the time. Well, an instinct is an innate behavior or desire of behavior that is written into your DNA. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about it. I'm Dave Salmoni for Animal Planet, and these are your Animal Bites. So instincts, we talk about them all the time, we feel like we know what they are, but really how does that happen? How does a behavior kind of intertwine itself in your genetics and then evolve and pass on over time in order to help an animal succeed in the wild? Well, it's kind of a little bit of learning and a little bit of coded genetics, meaning evolution kind of works alongside the environment in order to teach animals these behaviors. And let me give you some examples of what I mean. The hunting instinct. We talk about it all the time. You probably see it at home. You know, when your cat chases after that ball of yarn, he doesn't know what yarn is and he probably doesn't like the net. He has got the hunting instinct. It kicks in and they go after it. Your dog, when they chase a squirrel, your dog's likely never had to eat a squirrel. You probably feed it pretty well and your dog probably unlikely would know what to do with that squirrel if he caught it. But something in there, in the gene says, get it, squirrel. Chasing a ball, no different. But how does that then turn itself into a top-notch predator? You know, being a predator expert, I love studying predation. And you, and the subtle knowledge that all these predators have, you have to believe, can't be just intertwined in the genetics. A tiger doesn't learn every technique it has by just waking up one day and he has it. A cheetah doesn't know how to ankle tap its prey and then jump on something and suffocate it while it can breathe. You know, these are all techniques that they learn alongside that innate behavior. Now, interestingly, in order to take that instinct and turn it into a behavior, well, that's sort of when mom and the environment comes in. We talk about nature via nurture. Now, it used to be nature versus nurture, which one creates behavior. Now we know it's both. So, What happens oftentimes is the animal is born with this instinct. I want to get something. And then mom helps them along the way. Some of the coolest ways that mom will help their babies become predators uh, is food play. The cheat is a great example of an animal that very often does this play behavior that we all think is cruel. Mom will run down a gazelle, kind of hurt it a little bit, slow it down, and then let the babies play with it. That play is them honing their instincts. They are learning how to transition that feeling of go get it to catching, knocking down, and managing that prey source, uh, which is really important for a predator. We also see it in orcas when you see them throw in the seals in the area. Some people believe that that's tenderizing the meat because their teeth are very specific, let's say, but a lot of people believe that that's just play teaching the babies how to manage their food. Another really cool example is this bobcat. Now this bobcat has to learn how to catch a gopher. And if you have lived anywhere with gophers and they've ruined your garden or ruined your farmer's field, uh, you can attest to the fact that gophers are pretty tough to catch. Uh, So what happens is the bobcats are born with this instinct going, hey, that is a food item for me. They're not the biggest predator in the world, so they have to find food items out there that are gonna offer them lots of nutrient for the least amount of work. So this bobcat then will get into an opportunity, will then put himself in a place where, okay, there are gopher here, now how do I catch them? Gophers always have those little escape holes, and it's through trial and error that these animals learn how to catch this food. It is a good way for the youngsters who are learning to hunt to learn how to manage their prey without risking losing their prey. Because, uh, you know, know, if you miss a meal in the wild, that could be the end. Now, another really interesting uh, instinct group uh, to me is migration. Migration is interesting because I think it's interesting that scientists haven't figured it out yet. Now, we do know that birds migrate, but how do we know how they do it, when to do it, and where to go? Well, these are the instincts kicking in again. So scientists believe uh, that sometimes the cues are the sun, you know, the shorter days. Sometimes it's lack of food, and that often will cue them. A lot of times, it's in a flock animal, they're just the young ones are learning from the old ones when to go, and that then perpetuates itself. But where do they go? Well, how do they have a map in their head? You know, are they just really, really good at it? Yes, but we don't know really. So some people think it's the magnetic fields that they track in on. There are birds that will migrate from the south to the north pole, the oil bird. And it is fascinating to figure out how the first one does it. On your first journey from the south pole to the north pole, you must wonder, what the heck is going on here? 
There are theories for migration that suggest they follow stars, they follow smell, they follow landmarks, they, they follow everything, which basically means we're not sure. What I think is it's probably a good combination of everything. One thing I know about behavior is it's rarely just one thing. We take a group of solutions that are probably all true. Another really interesting instinct, in my opinion, is hibernation. I did a lot of studying of hibernation. When do they hibernate? Why do they hibernate? Where do they hibernate? Well, you know, we know a little bit more about these guys. We know that it is an instinct. We know that even captive bears can be taught how to hibernate, even if their uh, days don't change and their food source doesn't change. Even they can be taught to hibernate. Um, so we know it's an instinct, but that instinct has to be honed in some degree. Now, we know that the timing of hibernation typically speaks to when the food around uh, become scarce. This is a cool animal. This is an animal that says, you know what? I don't want to work hard. I'm going to sleep through the hard times. So instead of this bear going, I, I'm going to figure out how to find food like all the other animals do, they're like, nah, I'm going to go hibernate. Now, it should be sad. They don't truly hibernate. They go into a torpor, which doesn't mean anything. Just They don't sleep as deeply as a normal hibernator. But that's not the point. The thing that I find interesting is that when the days start getting shorter, food starts disappearing, the bear's like, ah, I'm gonna bulk up. So his body starts to change, the chemistry of his body changes, he starts to eat as many calories as he can, takes on all kinds of fat. And then another cool thing that happens is they have learned, maybe through mom, maybe through honing of instinct, that they will go to the part of their home range where the springtime food is, and they don't hibernate where the fall time food is. So they bulk up, bulk up, and then they travel. They travel to the spot because they've learned that I know I have this instinct that says I'm getting sleepy, but I have to remember when I wake up, I won't have any energy. They lose over a third of their body weight while they're hibernating. So they have learned, that, oh man, I don't want to have to trek then. So they trek now when they're fat. And then they go den where the springtime food is so that then when they wake up, they just pop right out and they eat. Now, interestingly, how do they know when to come out? Well, some people also believe it's the sun and the days, uh, but a lot of times people believe that because they are not in the deepest, deepest sleep, they can kind of monitor the situation. They can wait for the cues, the sights, the smells, the sounds of spring, and they know, oh, this is the opportunity for me to uh, find some food. So they have to poke their head up, first food out there, they go get it, calories come up, then they have the energy to start looking for food and having and bulking up for the next season. Uh, a super fun animal. Well, guys, my instincts say it's time to wrap it up. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. As always, guys, please leave the comments. I love chatting to you guys. Uh, questions if you have any. Um, and until next time, go for a walk in the river.